Welcome to the Military Breakdown Podcast. We're diving deep into the just announced next generation stealth fighter, the F-47. Exciting stuff. It really is. And it seems like everyone in the aerospace world is talking about this thing since President Trump and Air Force Chief of Staff General David W. Olvin unveiled it at the White House on March 21st, 2025. Big day for air power. It really was. This is a huge deal. So today we're going to break down what we know about this groundbreaking aircraft, its capabilities, its strategic importance, and what it signals for the future of aerial warfare. A lot to unpack. Where do we even begin? <laughs> well, the F-47 is being touted as the world's first crewed sixth generation fighter. And that's a direct response to some of those claims we've been hearing from China about their own stealth aircraft, right? Absolutely. It's like they're saying, we're here and we're ahead of the game. Okay, so let's talk about design. They've released renderings, but obviously they're intentionally yeah. concealing a lot of detail. Of course, they're not giving away all their secrets. Right. But what we do see is a pretty radical departure from traditional fifth generation designs like the F-22 and F-35. Yeah, it definitely has a different look. Some really interesting visual cues there. For example, we see a conventionally stealthy nose, a bubble canopy, a very chiseled shine, flattened fuselage, and get this both canards and wings with an upward angle. Canards, it's a bit unusual for a stealth fighter, isn't it? They usually increase maneuverability, but also create more radar reflection. You're right. You don't typically see canards on stealth aircraft because, as you said, they can compromise the radar signature. But their inclusion here, well, it suggests they found a way to integrate them without sacrificing stealth. Maybe advances in shaping or material. It's a puzzle for sure. And that upward angle of the wings, that could be tied to stealth as well, maybe deflecting radar waves in a new way. Or it could be about improving lift at different altitudes, which would affect range and how long it can stay in the air. Fascinating. And speaking of stealth, they're calling it next generation stealth. What exactly does that even mean? Well, it likely means they've made significant advancements across the board. Think more refined shaping, even more advanced radar absorbing materials, maybe ones that are more durable and effective against a wider range of radar frequencies. It's possible they're even working on reducing its infrared and acoustic signatures. So basically they're making it even harder to detect than the current stealth aircraft, which are already incredibly difficult to track. Exactly. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible when it comes to being invisible to enemy sensors. Crucial if you're going to operate in heavily defended airspace. They're also talking a lot about sensor fusion. Can you break that down for us? What does that mean in practical terms for the pilot? Imagine this. You're a pilot in this thing. You've got all these sensors feeding you information radar, infrared, electronic warfare systems, data links from other aircraft. Sensor fusion takes all that raw data and blends it together to give you one clear, concise picture of everything happening around you. So instead of having to interpret a bunch of different screens and data streams, you get a unified view of the battle space. Right. It's about making sense of all that information and prioritizing the most critical threats. This is a game changer for situational awareness, decision making, and reacting quickly to threats, essential for modern air combat. Absolutely. And it's not just about seeing the enemy, it's about being able to reach them. They're really emphasizing long-range strike capability with this aircraft. General Alvin even said it'll have significantly longer range than the F-22, which wow. already has a pretty impressive range. No kidding. He specifically talked about needing a fighter with greater range for the Pacific Theater. The F-22 is awesome, but even it has limitations when you're talking about the vast distances in that part of the world. So it seems like they're really designing this aircraft with China in mind. It would certainly appear that way. They're thinking about how to project power over long distances and engage targets far away. Okay, let's shift gears a bit and talk about modularity. It might not sound as exciting as stealth or weapons, but it's super important for the long-term viability of the F-47. Modularity is key for any long-term platform, especially in the world of rapid technological advancement. In the F-47's case, it means being able to swap out and upgrade key systems as new technologies emerge. So kind of like building with Legos, mm. but, you know, with incredibly sophisticated, top-secret military technology instead of plastic bricks? Exactly. Think about it. As new sensors, weapons, or processing systems are developed, they can be easily integrated into the existing F-47 platform without needing a major redesign. So it's all about staying ahead of the curve and making sure the aircraft remains relevant for decades to come. 
That's exactly it. They're taking a built to adapt approach, which will be essential in a world where threats and technologies are constantly evolving. And along those lines, they're also emphasizing sustainability, supportability, and higher availability. They're even comparing it to the B-21 bomber, calling it a daily flyer. What's the significance of that? Well, it suggests a real focus on practicality. They want an aircraft that can fly regularly without needing constant time-consuming maintenance. It's about designing more durable stealth coatings that can handle the wear and tear of frequent missions. And easier to maintain components, so less time in the hangar and more time in the air. Exactly. All of this translates to higher operational readiness and better cost effectiveness over the lifespan of the aircraft. It's about making sure the F-47 is actually out there doing its job, not stuck in a maintenance bay. And that built-to-adapt philosophy also seems to extend to the software and systems. They're talking about using digital design and an open systems architecture to facilitate frequent updates. It sounds like they're borrowing a page from the tech industry where software updates are constantly being rolled out. It's a very similar concept. Digital design allows for quicker prototyping, more simulation before they actually build anything, and faster identification and resolution of problems. And the open systems architecture means different software and hardware components can be integrated more easily, even if they're from different manufacturers. So it's all about flexibility and being able to adapt to changing needs and new technologies as they become available. Right. It's about fostering innovation and staying ahead of the curve in a world that's constantly evolving. It's crucial for the long-term success of the program. Another fascinating point is that they expect the F-47 to require significantly less manpower and infrastructure to deploy. That could have major implications for how and where the Air Force can operate in the future. No question about it. That suggests a shift towards a more agile and lean deployment model. If they can reduce the reliance on ground support equipment and specialized personnel, it means they can deploy the F-47 to more places, including austere locations with limited infrastructure. It basically gives them more options and flexibility when it comes to projecting air power around the world. Exactly. And a smaller logistical footprint is always a good thing, especially in a military context. It makes the entire operation more efficient and responsive. They haven't released official performance figures yet, wow. but the expectation is a top speed of around Mach 2 and the ability to operate with drone swarms, what they're calling Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs. Yeah, that's a game changer right there. A top speed of Mach 2 is pretty standard for modern fighters, so while speed is obviously still important, it's not the main focus here. It's the ability to operate seamlessly with drones that really sets this aircraft apart. So these CCAs, they can basically act as force multipliers. Right. Uh, they can carry extra weapons, provide additional sensor coverage, even undertake high-risk missions that would be too dangerous for a piloted aircraft. You got it. They can be the eyes and ears of the F-47, extending its reach and effectiveness in combat. It's about creating a more powerful and versatile fighting force. And they're calling this whole concept Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD. It's not just about replacing the F-22, it's about a whole new approach to air superiority. NGAD is all about creating a family of systems that work together seamlessly. The F-47, also called Penetrating Counter Air or PCA, is the centerpiece of this system, working in conjunction with those uncrewed CCAs we talked about. So it's all about integration and creating a more networked, flexible, and ultimately more lethal fighting force. Exactly. And it's being driven by some very real strategic concerns. Air Force leaders like Major General Joseph Kunkel and General Kenneth Wilsbach have been very vocal about the need for NGAD to maintain air superiority in an increasingly challenging global environment. And they're particularly worried about China's advancements in air power, right? China's own development of stealth fighters and advanced air defense systems seems to be a major factor driving the urgency behind the NGAD program. Without a doubt. The Air Force sees China's growing military capabilities as a direct challenge, and they want to make sure the U.S. maintains its edge in the skies. Especially with those rising tensions in the Indo-Pacific region, particularly around Taiwan, the vast distances and increasingly sophisticated Chinese air defenses make that a very challenging area to operate in. You're right. And the F-22, while capable, has limitations in that theater. That's why the longer range of the F-47 is so important. It needs to be able to operate effectively across those vast distances and penetrate those advanced defenses. And the fact that it can operate with drones makes it even more potent. Definitely. Those CCAs can act as loyal wingmen, allowing the F-47 to take on missions that would be too risky for a piloted aircraft alone. They can provide cover, scout ahead, or even draw enemy fire. It really changes the whole dynamic of air combat. 
Absolutely. We're moving into a new era of aerial warfare, and the F-47 is at the forefront of that shift. So it's clear that the F-47 is being developed with China in mind, but the implications are much broader than that. Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth said it sends a very direct, clear message to our allies that we're not going anywhere and to our enemies that we can, and we will be able to project power around the globe unimpeded for generations to come. That's a pretty powerful statement. And it highlights the fact that the F-47 isn't just about winning dogfights. It's about maintaining U.S. global influence and deterring adversaries. It's about power projection and ensuring that the U.S. can operate freely anywhere in the world. Right. And General Alvin's statement that the F-47 will allow the U.S. to write the next generation of modern aerial warfare really reinforces that idea. He also said it will provide more lethality, more capability, and more modernized capability. They're not just aiming for an incremental improvement. They want a major leap forward. Forward. Definitely. They see this as a transformative program, one that will fundamentally change how the Air Force operates and maintains its dominance in the skies. All right, let's talk money. This is a massive undertaking. Boeing was awarded the Engineering and Manufacturing Development, or EMD, contract for the F-47, and it's worth over $20 billion. That's a huge investment. The EMD contract is going to fund the maturing, integration, and testing of all the systems, as well as building a small number of test aircraft and it includes options for low-rate initial production. Similar to what they did with the B-21 bomber. Exactly. They're taking a phased approach to manage the cost and risk. And speaking of cost, the program actually had a strategic pause back in 2024 because of concerns about the price tag. There were worries that each F-47 could cost three times more than an F-35. That's a big concern, obviously. But after that pause, they conducted an internal study and determined that the program was still necessary, despite the cost. It shows you how important they think this program is. And while the exact unit cost is still classified, the goal is for it to cost less than the F-22, which is around $140 million per plane. Ambitious goal considering all the advanced technology we've been discussing. It is ambitious, but they're hoping that the emphasis on digital design, modularity, and maintainability will help keep costs down. And they're reportedly looking at a fleet size of between 220 and 250 aircraft, which is more than they built of the F-22. A larger production run could bring down the per unit cost. So this is a huge win for Boeing. It ends Lockheed Martin's near monopoly on Air Force fighter production. And the choice of the designation F-47 is interesting, too. It's clearly a nod to the P-47 Thunderbolt from World War II, the year the Air Force was founded, and President Trump's support for the program. It's definitely not a coincidence. They're tying the future of air power to its past and acknowledging the political backing that made the program possible. And all this has been a long time coming. They've been working on next-generation aircraft concepts for over a decade. DARPA's Aerospace Innovation Initiative back in 2014 was a key part of that. They developed experimental X-plane prototypes that have been flying for the past five years, testing out all these advanced technologies. Those X-planes have been crucial for de-risking the program. They've been able to test out a lot of the key concepts in stealth, aerodynamics, and autonomous flight, which has paved the way for the F-47. And they're aiming for a first flight by early 2029. It's an aggressive timeline, but they think they can do it thanks to all the groundwork that's already been laid. It's a tight schedule, but they seem confident. And they're already seeing some success with their sixth generation bomber program, the B-21 Raider. That aircraft is already in its flight testing phase. So the F-47 and the B-21 represent a two-pronged approach to modernizing the Air Force's ability to penetrate heavily defended airspace and project power around the world. And the Navy's working on its own next generation fighter, the FAXX. So this is just one piece of a much larger effort to maintain U.S. air dominance across the board. Absolutely. It's a whole-of-government approach to ensuring the U.S. military maintains its technological advantage in the coming decades. So what does it all mean? Well, the F-47 is more than just a new airplane. It's a bold vision for the future of air power. It represents a major shift in how the Air Force is thinking about air superiority. It's about integrating advanced technologies, embracing new concepts like drone teaming, and adapting to the evolving challenges of modern warfare. And it's all happening against the backdrop of increasing strategic competition with China. The F-47 is a symbol of American technological prowess, a statement of intent to maintain global leadership, and a reminder that the future of warfare is going to look very different from the past. It certainly is. And the implications are profound, not just for the military, but for the global balance of power. Well, that's all the time we have for this in-depth look at the F-47. 
We hope you found this discussion informative. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, be sure to subscribe to the Military Breakdown Podcast for more insightful analysis of the latest developments in military technology and strategy.